Hello guys and you're welcome to the journey of a Niger boy. My name is Pascal Okio. You can call me Pascal that you already know. Today, I have another wonderful guest with me and we'll be discussing about studying a course that has a co-op option. That is what we'll be discussing today. So I'll let my guest introduce himself. But before then, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please click on the red button now to subscribe, like my video and click on the notification bell so that when next I post any video, you'll be the first person to know about the video. So let's get started. So can you introduce yourself, please? Um, my name is Dotson. If I don't know, people call me Dotson. I'm a grad student in UMB. I study chemical engineering. Okay, grad student in UMB, chemical engineering. So let's start from the beginning. Chemical engineering, why did you decide that you were going to come and do your master's in chemical engineering? Um, I think that's the only thing I know, really. really. My undergrad was in chemical engineering, so it only really made sense to do my master's in chemical engineering. Okay, so uh, how do you find chemical engineering as a master's program in UMB right now? Um, it's it's great. I mean, it's, it's a course based master, so it's kind of tailored for professionals. Like, if you want to go into the field, okay. So they have um, courses that that professional based, like um, say paper making is is a cost based on people that make paper, like for the paper industry, polymer, um, nuclear engineering, stuff like that. So it's, it's tailored for professionals. Okay. But there's also a research option. So okay. that's more academic and going to yeah, so. All right. So how has it been settling down for you into this course, into this program specifically when you arrived? Um, it wasn't so, it wasn't so difficult. I mean, I'm naturally reserved, so it's, it's a bit challenging, you know, getting to relate with people and get stuff. But it's, it's not really difficult. I mean, we're Nigerians, yeah. we are built to pass. Like, <laughs> Definitely. that one is like, <laughs> we know how to pass exams. Like, if it's to pass, I'm sure we'll, we'll do great. But yeah, it's, it's not really difficult. You just need to. All right, so let's yeah. talk about the, the culture shock which is for everybody, I know that the culture that is so difficult for everybody to adjust to is the Sorosuke culture, which is you have to speak loud, you have to speak when you need help, when you need something from people, you have to speak. That is what the Canadian encourage, yeah. encourages to as well. So what is, how difficult was it for you to really adjust to that particular kind of culture here? Yeah. Knowing that you are even a very reserved person. I mean, it's, it's difficult. It's still difficult. Most of the friends I have, if not all the friends I have, here in Canada, Nigerians, and it's, it's kind of like it's not so great. Like you should be able to, you know, meet more people yeah. from different cultures, different background. But it's, it's still difficult for me. But I try my best. Okay, and you're absolutely up to do it. Good, good. Um, so would you say that uh, something that helped you to be able to uh, live more better or live a, a more free life is getting interaction from the African community or from the Canadian community itself? Um, if you are like me, all you actually need to survive is your Nigerian friends, like just people, family around you, if you're like, that's, that's really all you need to survive. <laughs> okay, so does that mean that you don't have a Canadian friend or you just have fewer friends from I think I have one acquaintance that is Canadian and white. Really? Yeah, every, every other person that is my friend or that I can go to for help, they are Nigerians. But would you say there are advantages or disadvantages to not having more Canadian friends or not relating with the locals itself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, in Canada, it is their country, so definitely there are more opportunities that they are privy to. Yeah. They have more information. They've grown in the system. They know how to go about things better. They know how to relate with your lecturers better. Yeah. The numerous advantages, if you can get to relate with them, it, it has its advantages. Okay, talking about relating to lecturers and be able to uh, survive in the school environment itself, I understand the fact that we are from Africa or basically we're from Nigeria and we have this die hard and do better attitude and spirit. Would you say that it was easy for you to really taste 
is your exams that you were doing while you started maybe your first semester was more difficult than your second semester which do you think that was better yeah my second term was definitely better than the first term it's not like the first term was bad but like you know learning the ropes trying to get down with but like i said nigerians <laughs> even exam will pass you know i think the exam is everything for you know you pass the course but you pass the exam not for sure okay no problem so let's talk about your program itself that comes with the co-op option uh, for those that are watching us that really do not know what co-ops mean co-op mean uh actually what what how would you describe the course that you're studying with the co-op option itself what does what does that even entail um so co-op is basically an internship that is paid um in nigeria we do cyber yes yeah. cyber is oh yeah it's, it's, yeah it yeah it's something like that but it is paid okay um and then you get to um get real life experience practical experience it's it's great really for professionals okay would you say it is easy for you to actually get attachments you know like in nigeria you probably have to go out and find uh a company for you for yourself is it easy is it is, it, is there a different process to get an attachment here um i wouldn't say it's easy i mean this school helps you it's, it's definitely not um, connection based, it's, it's merits, it's a lot of, you have to apply, write the best CV, write the best cover letters, do well in the interviews that you do get, and to get to get a chance. So it's it's not easy, but it is totally on merit. Okay, so I know that uh, there are options to go in for co-ops too as well. You can go on four months, ten or eight months or even one year. What are, are there uh, criteria? for going on a one year or going on a four month? Co-op. Yeah, I think the rule is um, your co-op term cannot be longer than your academic term. Like, so if, if your program is for a year, okay, your co-op term cannot be more than a year. Okay. If your program is more than a year, then you can have more than a year. That's for grad students, oh. actually. I don't know about undergrad, but for I think undergrad school goes for... Yeah, they go for co-op, okay. but I don't know the maximum, there's a maximum number of things for them. But for grad students, if your program, if your course is going to take you a year, then you can only go up more than yeah. that. Okay, so for you, where you went for your co-op, you decided that you were going to do a one-year co-op. Yeah. Is that, that is true. So why did you choose to do a one-year co-op instead of, say, a four-month co-op? Because for me, I did a four-month instead. I even had opportunity to do like eight months. Why did four months? Why did you choose to do like a year or instead? Um, a year is I don't know about you, but like where I did my where I did my co-op, the first four months I would say I was still learning. Like I I didn't even gotten the whole concept. I didn't even know the company. So I I don't think four months would have been enough for me if I actually wanted to learn something like it should be too short. So I've said I've gotten enough experience. Yeah. That's one. Then two is um, this thing called PMG, professional engineering, okay. like in Nigeria where you have Korean. Mm-hmm. So your co-op term counts towards your work experience, oh, right? That's good. Yeah. So to become a professional engineer in Canada, you need forty-eight months work experience. Mm-hmm. So if you have one year during your co-op, so you, that reduced it to three years, yes. right? So those are the advantages too. Also, I didn't know this, but um, your co-op them can count towards your work experience when you're applying for your permanent residence. So, okay, yeah. So, but that is that is now contradictory to the information that I have anyway, because I know that co-op is not part of the work experience count anyway. So that is new. Yeah, I don't know if it is new, but we recently found out that for federal skilled, if the co-op was paid yeah. and continuous. It can count towards your work experience. Okay, that's good. That's a new one, guys. So if you, if you're coming to come and study and you're considering the co-op option, that is another new information. So after you're back from the co-op, how strange did, did everything feel for you to even adjust to the new life of school or the new way of school? Um, trust me, I don't want to come back. 
<laughs> were you making too much money or you were just like, okay, I'm done with school? It's, it's not really the money. The money is nice, but it's, it's really not the money. It's just, it's just, it's difficult to get into the corporate society and come finish back. your life and then come back as a student. It's, it's a tricky situation, but it's something that you have to do, but so, I'm adjusting. Would you say that that is like a disadvantage to having the co-op option itself, the fact that you feel reluctant to be back to school again? I don't think it's a disadvantage, I just think it's um, what's the one now? It's, it's definitely not a disadvantage, it's just um, human nature, just if you just want to be, if you want to give yourself an excuse not yes. to do it, okay. but it's, it's, not, it's not a disadvantage. So given, so given that you left school in 2019, when everything was still in class and everything was going smoothly, now, 2020 was your co-op year and Corona kicked in and a lot of things changed. Coming back to school as an online student now, what is the craziest shock that you've had as an online student in Dali? Um, there hasn't been much shock. I mean, I've just had like one week of lecture and like while we were working, it was online. So like, I really got to adapt to the online life during my co-op, so it wasn't really it's not a shock at it. Okay, so for those that are aspiring to come to Canada at this point in time, given that things have changed, uh, things are different now, what advice will you give to them when they are putting in their application to come and study? And what should you say? Uh, what should be their expectation when coming during this time? Um, you just have to, you know, go with the way the world is. I think a lot of people are using um, is it Teams or Zoom yes. or stuff like that. Just know that that's, that's going to be your world now because that's that's where the world is moving towards. And I think this is going to go on for a long term. I mean, it seems like a lot of people are now realizing that we can actually work remotely yes. and school remotely. So even when all of this is over, I feel like some companies, some schools will start doing this alternative delivery methods so I would advise you to get more comfortable with this alternative delivery lifestyle because it seems like it's going to be here for a while. Okay. So co-op finally would you say co-op is the best option as in choosing your course that comes with the co-op option is the best uh best decision you've made? Yeah absolutely 100 percent like I can't point to one disadvantage for me personally to doing a co-op. I mean, yes, it makes your degree longer, but it also gives you one year of experience that counts towards your professional licensing, that counts towards, towards your power and residency. It's, it's just all embodied. Like, you also know that stuff of um, when if your program is not to a year, you don't get more than yeah, one year. So it just makes you at ease that, okay, yeah. It smooths my program to two okay. years, okay. so now I know that I'm qualified for a three-year work permit. It's like it settles you differently. Yeah. It makes you feel more exactly. Better. And you also make money. So. Okay, I think the most <laughs> the <is> the couple <laughs> for that. For that anyway. So that means that it is good and nice to actually come for the core program itself. Yeah. So what final advice or what final encouragement will you give to anybody that is watching us now that wants to come and study your course explicitly and thinking that uh, this is what I have in mind and how do I go about it? What advice will you give to that person right now? Um, I think if you are coming to study chemical engineering, you should just lean towards system solutions, software solutions because we cannot, I don't want to deceive you, the world is moving towards IT tech, we are becoming our jobs are being taken away. So just <laughs> basically just try and you know be as computer literate as you can. If you can learn some basic programming skills, Python. Yeah, I think Python was the easiest for me to get there. Yeah, so just try and learn a little bit of programming skills. Just be what's the one now? Equip yourself. Yeah, equip yourself with every kind of knowledge that you can yeah. get, every kind of writing. Right? Exactly, and you'll 
you will do fine. All right. So thank you very much for coming. I hope that if people have questions, they'll be able to meet you in the comment section of this video. Sure. All right. No problem. So thank you guys for watching this video again. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe to this channel. Click on the like button, like this video, and click on the notification button too, so that whenever I drop any video, you'll be the first person to know. So till next time that I meet you again, I still remain Pascal, aka Pascali, that you already know. Take care. <laughs>